What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Byte for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's get to the show, and we start with the iPhone, but not the iPhone 8 rumors. We're talking about the original iPhone. Now, the next iPhone will celebrate its 10th anniversary, and iOS chief Scott Forstall, who was fired after the whole Apple Maps debacle, remember that? He gave a rare interview at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View where he talked about how the iPhone came to be. And it's not really what you expect. Well, the iPhone uh, had a very circuitous route uh, by itself. It began uh, because Steve hated this guy at Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the actual origin uh, was of this it. Dinner? And it wasn't Bill, because he was starting to like Bill by this point. Uh, and he came back one time after seeing this guy, and that guy was talking about how Microsoft had solved computing. They solved like, net, uh, like uh, laptop computing, or they were going to do laptop or uh, uh, tablet computing, and they were going to do it with pens. And he just like, shoved it in Steve's face the way they were going to like, rule the world with their new tablets with their pens. And Steve came in on Monday, and, uh, and there was a set of expletives. Uh, and, and then it was like, let's show them how it's really done. <laughs> it's like, the first thing is, they're idiots. You don't use a stylus. You know, it's cumbersome. You lose it. You're always like picking it up and putting it down. You, we're born with 10 styluses. Yep, that sounds like the SJ we know. Forstall said, originally, before the iPhone was ever discussed, Steve Jobs wanted a tablet with capacitive touch and multi-touch. I remember one of the first demos of this. You walked into a room. There's a giant, giant table. There's a projector on the ceiling. And you can, like, you see a, a photo or something on, on the table. And you could move your finger around the table, and it would move the photo. Yeah. Super cool. It wouldn't fit in, you know, your, your bathroom, much less your pocket. Uh, <laughs> or your, your, you know, bag at the time, I guess, if you're doing a tablet. Uh, but the moment you saw that, you knew this was the way to go. Like, that was, that was cool. Now, in another cool nugget, he said the iPhone came about when he was eating lunch with Jobs, and they noticed everyone around them using their phone. And Steve said, do you think we could take that demo we're doing with the tablet and multi-touch and shrink it down to something big enough or small enough to fit in your pocket? it would be a phone size with that same touch technology. So I went back to the design team, and, uh, and they, they took and carved out a little corner of it and made this very simple demo. I'm pretty sure it was Boss who did it, uh, and Boss is, is, is one of the best. And he, he made this thing. It was a, a simple list of names. And you would, with your finger, you would drag along. It probably had the rubber banding and all. I mean, it's magical. You dragged along, and you tap on a name, and it would slide across and reveal the card. So phone number, email. You tap on a phone number, and it would say calling. It wasn't calling. It wasn't doing anything. But it said calling. Uh, the second you saw this demo, you knew this was it. The future. There was no question. This is the way that a phone had to behave. Yeah. Steve saw it and said, OK, Put the tablet on hold. Let's build a phone. Now, there's plenty more from the interview that you can check out on the Computer History Museum's Facebook page or YouTube channel with lots of other great stuff there. OK, let's get to the latest iPhone 8 chatter. Reuters reports component orders for the iPhone 8 are creating shortages of DRAM and NAND chips worldwide, making it difficult for competitors to secure their own supplies. LG has been forced to push orders through earlier by month, and component shortages are responsible for limiting the production of the Nintendo Switch. So all of you Nintendo Switch fans still waiting for yours, you could blame Apple. Now the demand is expected to exceed supply until sometime in 2018, and Sony is also prioritizing orders from Apple for their camera sensors as well. Okay, do you want to see more purported iPhone parts? I know you do. The leakers are back at it again with more shots of the front panel, this time from Benjamin Geskin, and even a video clip from Slash Leaks with the iPhone cutouts for the front-facing camera and other sensors like an ambient light, proximity, and a potential 3D sensing module. Maybe the final design will be different, but it would look so much cleaner to make that a single black bar across the top. I don't think I'm the only one who wants that either. And even website Mac Rumors has hints of the purported iPhone 8 showing up in their web analytics for specific devices also running iOS 11, you know, with September just around the corner. All right, you know who's really tired of all these leaks? Apple. In fact, 
Apple had an internal briefing for its employees called Stopping Leakers, Keeping Confidential at Apple. How do we know this? Well, a recording from it was leaked online by the website, The Outline. Ha! You just can't make this stuff up. The briefing was held for around 100 employees, lasted for about an hour, and was led by Apple's best security and communications experts. Now when leaks occur, they hunt down the sources to relay that info back to Apple headquarters. The briefing also revealed that in 2016, more leaks had come from Apple's own campuses versus the supply chain whose screening of workers is even more intense than the TSA. Oh wait, hold on a second. My phone just uh, went off and yeah, that's another story about leaked iPhone 8 parts. Okay, let's run through some quick bites. We showed you some AR kit demos last week, but I'm stoked about this one. IKEA is building an AR app of their own for AR kit that will let customers choose the IKEA product they want to see and how it looks in their room before it's purchased. The app will support between 500 to 600 products at launch. And guess what? Emoji update Unicode 10 has been officially released with 56 new emojis that will likely be coming to iOS later this year, possibly in an iOS 11.1 update since they most likely won't make it in time for iOS 11. So get ready for puke face, vampire, and a fortune cookie and takeout box are coming soon. Okay, let's turn back the clock and go back to the days of the Sega Genesis. Some of you watching right now weren't even alive back then. The Sega Forever Collection is coming to iOS and Android starting this week, where you can play classic games like Sonic the Hedgehog, Altered Beast, or Fantasy Star 11 for free with ads, or just two bucks to get rid of them. Now, new titles will be added every two weeks. They'll support iOS game controllers and will come with iMessage sticker packs. Say it with me now, say it, Sega! Sega! And before we leave, I just want to throw this to the Apple Byte Nation for their tweet of the week. Chad M tweeted me with, what do you think? Great gift for the wife? Don't do it, bro. Do not do it. All right, that's it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.